okay good morning all of you and uh, today we'll discuss about uh, the means of transport the comparison okay the comparison between the different types of uh, transport that is uh, diffusion facilitated diffusion and uh, active transport okay that is uh, so here one table is given okay, which gives a comparison of uh, different transport mechanisms okay that is the proteins in the membrane are responsible for facilitated diffusion and active transport and hence show common characteristics of being highly selective they are liable to saturate respond to inhibitors and are under a hormonal regulation okay when you observe the three different types of uh, transport process that is diffusion facilitated diffusion and active transport among these three facilitated diffusion and active transport occurs by the means of uh, carrier proteins that are present in the membrane so as they are uh, as this uh, transport occurs with the help of this uh, protein carriers okay they are uh, showing some common features that is uh, they are highly selective that means only selected molecules only selected molecules get uh, transported only selected molecules get uh, transported across the membrane by this uh, facilitated diffusion or active transport and next uh, they are okay they show the phenomenon of a saturation that means when all the protein carrier molecules are completely associated with the molecules need to be transported there is okay further there is no increase in the rate of uh, transport okay and this point we are calling it as saturation and next uh, respond to inhibitors okay respond to inhibitors okay that means uh, the okay that means if any inhibitor joins with the side chains of this uh, protein carrier molecules okay they may affect the transport of molecules and next uh, and they are under the control of hormones okay the hormones play very important role in a transport of these substances by either facilitated diffusion or a active transport so but uh, diffusion whether facilitated or not takes place only gradient and do not use energy when you observe the diffusion okay for a diffusion okay it is not selective it is okay we don't we doesn't find saturation point here no inhibition and no hormone only the gradient concentration gradient only the only one phenomena that is important for a diffusion that is maintenance of a concentration gradient depending upon the concentration gradient okay any molecule can be transported or any molecule can be cross the membrane okay so here there is no utilization of energy there is no need of any protein carrier molecules okay all that is not required okay. diffusion process so okay here we'll uh, observe some of the comparisons between the three types of uh, transports there is a uh, simple diffusion facilitated transport or facilitated diffusion and active transport okay requires a special membrane proteins okay simple diffusion does not require any special membrane proteins okay it occurs only according to the concentration gradient depending upon the concentration gradient the transport of molecules will occur 
but when it comes to facilitated uh, diffusion or facilitated transport and active transport okay in both the phases okay in both the transport mechanisms there is a requirement of some special membrane proteins and that too there are some special proteins for facilitated diffusion and there are some different special proteins for uh, active transport okay active okay active transport the proteins that are involved in active transport will not participate in facilitated diffusion and the protein carrier molecules which are involved in facilitated diffusion will not participate in active transport we'll find some special membrane proteins for two different types of transports that is facilitated diffusion and active transport and next selectivity highly selective okay simple diffusion here no select selective only okay there is no need of any selection that means uh, only specific molecules are only transported like that uh, it is not there with uh, simple diffusion any molecule can be transported if they are following this uh, concentration gradient if there is a difference in the concentration automatically the molecules get uh, transported but in facilitated diffusion or uh, uh, active transport uh, the molecules selective molecules only selected molecules only get a transported only selected molecules only transported and next when you observe the saturation transport saturation okay in case of a simple diffusion if the concentration gradient is maintained never the saturation point will occur it will continue and uh, depending upon the concentration if the concentration of the substrate is increased automatically the rate of di okay diffusion or transport also increases but uh, that is not with that of facilitated diffusion and active transport because they are facilitated with uh, some membrane protein carriers so if all the membrane protein molecules are associated with this carrier whatever the that need to be transported okay it reaches to a saturation point so the saturation point can be reached in facilitated transport or active transport but it will not occur in simple diffusion okay uphill transport that is the transport of molecules again is the concentration gradient okay again is the concentration gradient that is from low concentration to higher concentration okay from the region of lower concentration to the region region of higher concentration this movement of or this movement of molecules or this transport of molecules we are calling it as uphill transport we are calling it as uphill transport okay and uh, okay but uh, when okay it is not observed with reference to simple diffusion and facilitated transport because in both the cases the transport of molecules occurs along the concentration gradient along the concentration gradient but when you observe the active transport the active transport occurs again is the concentration gradient that is from a lower concentration from the region of lower concentration to the region of a higher concentration that is uphill transport so uphill transport occurs with reference to active transport but it is not observed with reference to simple diffusion and facilitated transport okay and next coming to the uh, atp requirements requirement of atp energy simple diffusion and facilitated transport the both but require energy because in okay there is okay in simple diffusion even though in the absence of a protein carrier molecules the transport of molecules occur only in a one direction that is from a low okay from a region of higher concentration to the region of a lower concentration okay even okay if you observe the facilitated transport even the facilitated transport is occurring with the help of the protein carrier molecules 
but they also get transported along the concentration gradient only that is from a higher concentration to lower concentration even if they are facilitated with the protein molecules that are present in the membrane but when you observe the active transport as the active transport involves the transport of molecules of lower concentration to higher concentration definitely they have to spend some energy okay definitely they have to spend some energy okay that uh, okay that means uh, that they have to spend some energy in the form of atp as uh, they are uh, transporting again is the concentration gradient that's why this uh, active transport requires energy because uh, they are transporting again is the concentration gradient okay that is uh, so these are the some of the comparisons between the three means of transport that is simple diffusion facilitated diffusion or facilitated transport and <laughs> active transport anybody is having any doubt okay that is okay that is when you observe the diffusion the diffusion is passive and may be from one part of the cell to the other or from cell to cell or over short distances like from the intercellular spaces of the leaf to the outside and here no energy expenditure takes place okay why the diffusion occurs means diffusion occurs because of the random movement of individual molecules from a region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration okay as the molecules are in a random motion okay the diffusion occurs be between the mole okay between the molecules from the region of uh, high concentration to the region of lower concentration it is a slow process and independent of living system for example if you take a mixture of gases okay here the okay the exchange of gases will occur depending upon the partial pressure of the individual gas okay that means uh, the number of molecules that are present uh, for each type of gas molecules dip okay depending on that only that okay the exchange or the transport of molecules will occur for example if you take the lungs the exchange of uh, respiratory gases in the lungs okay during inspiration what happens the air that is brought from outside into the lungs will be having uh, more that means the partial pressure of oxygen will be more in the air that is present in the lungs but uh, the blood that is brought by the blood cap okay blood vessels to the lungs it is having more carbon dioxide okay and less oxygen that means the partial pressure of oxygen will be less in the blood that is brought to the lungs from the heart through pulmonary arteries whereas the air that is coming from outside into the lungs is having the more partial pressure of oxygen that's why the oxygen diffuses from lungs into the blood capillaries whereas when you observe the carbon dioxide the partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be low in the inhaled air that is present in the lungs and at the same time the partial pressure of carbon dioxide will be more in the blood capillaries that are present associated with the lungs so because of this because of high partial pressure of carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide will moves into the lungs 
whereas the because of the high partial pressure of oxygen the oxygen moves out of the lungs into the blood capillaries so here so that what we have to remember here so diffusion is a random movement of individual molecules so we have to take into consideration the individual molecules we have to take into consideration the individual molecules so it depends upon the concentration of the individual molecule okay in a mixture also so that is okay that is larger the difference in concentration more rapid is the flow of molecules so the rate of diffusion will be more if the concentration of the molecule is more so uptake and distribution of water gases and solutes occur in plants as a result of diffusion okay diffusion is common in gases and liquids but diffusion in solids rather than of solids is more likely that means uh, a little bit less solids in solids is very less but uh, the diffusion in gases and liquids is uh, common okay that is the diffusion of carbon dioxide from atmosphere to leaves diffusion rates are affected by concentration gradient membrane permeability temperature and pressure the more the concentration gradient the more the transport okay the rate of diffusion the more the permeability the more the diffusion okay the more the temperature the okay the rate of diffusion will be high the more the pressure the rate of diffusion is also high okay and next uh, now okay at this point you have to understand one concept that is the diffusion pressure which is uh, commonly called as a dp okay this uh, diffusion pressure the term diffusion pressure was coined by mayer in 1938 is the pressure exerted by the tendency of the particles to diffuse from the area of higher concentration to the area of lower concentration okay that means the pressure with which the molecules will move from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration <coughs> is called as the diffusion pressure okay diffusion pressure is directly proportional to the concentration of particles of the diffusing substance and temperature so diffusion pressure is directly proportional to the concentration of the particles that means the more the concentration the more the diffusion pressure and the temperature is also directly proportional to the diffusion pressure the more the temperature the more the kinetic energy the more the kinetic energy the molecules will be in a random motion if they are in random motion automatically the diffusion pressure will be more and next the extent to which a membrane permits or restricts the movement of a substance is called membrane permeability okay that means the permeability of the membrane depends how it permits okay whether it permits that molecule or not whether it it permits or restricts okay that depends upon the permeability of that membrane it depends upon the membrane composition and chemical nature of the solute so that means it depends upon the membrane composition and also the nature of the solute for example if you take the plasma membrane as the plasma membrane is made up of lipid bilayer so the molecules which can dissolve in a can get a transported easily because the lipids are more soluble okay that means the chemical okay the substances which are soluble in lipids can be easily transported okay so the okay if it is a hydrophilic 
if it is a hydrophilic molecule that molecule cannot be easily transported through this uh, lipid layer so that means uh, here the permeability depends upon the chemical nature of the plasma membrane at the same time the chemical nature of the molecule or solute which need to be transported okay based upon the permeability the membranes are of different types like a permeable membrane impermeable membrane semi permeable membrane differentially permeable membrane what is a permeable membrane okay if the molecule allows all the substances to pass through it okay it may be the solvent or solute that is the liquid or or the molecule which is dissolved in that any liquid or any molecule which is dissolved in that liquid so solvent and solute solvent refers to liquid and solute refers to molecule which is dissolved in that solvent so allow diffusion of both solvent and solute molecules or ions through them such structures we call it as permeable example the cell walls the cellulosic cell wall lignified cell walls with pits lignified cell walls with pits the pits some pores or openings are present which we call pits so due to the presence of that pits they will allow all the substance <coughs> sorry so cellulosic cell wall okay at the cell walls we can say the cell wall the cell wall is a per, is a permeable membrane it allows all the substances to pass through it and the next one is impermeable membrane that means the membrane which will prevent the movement of any molecule that means prohibit the diffusion of both solvent and solute molecules or ions through them okay example heavily cutinized or okay superized cell walls in plants heavily cutinized or okay superized cell walls in plants okay that's okay when you observe the except the root hair zone the remaining part of the root is covered by cutin cutinized that's why that is impermeable to water and gases only the trans okay only the intake of water and minerals will occur through the root hair zone only and the superized the endodermis okay the endodermis in the roots is uh, the cells that are lining okay that are present in the endodermis of the roots uh, is deposited with a fatty layer that is suberin which makes it impervious to water and other substances okay at some places where this suberin is absent we call it as passive cells and the, okay at through these passive cells only the water or minerals or any substances will enter in into the inner parts of the root so the suberized cell walls in plants and a cutinized cell walls in plants are uh, impermeable membranes and next one semi permeable membrane allow diffusion of solvent molecules but not allow the passage of a solute molecules if a membrane is allowing only the movement of a solvent molecules and do not allow the solute molecules then such a type of membrane we are calling it as semi permeable membrane okay they will form the partition between two osmometers membrane of a colloidal parchment paper okay the membrane made up of copper ferrocyanide 
and it is essential for operation of osmosis. That means the osmosis, okay, if you are, if you are, I am saying osmosis means, what is the membrane that is involved means it is the semi-permeable membrane only. Okay, the different types of biomembranes. In plant water relations, biomembranes largely function as semi-permeable membrane. Okay, all the biomembranes are semi-permeable membranes. And next, differentially permeable membrane allow only certain substances to pass through them. Allow the passage of solvent as well as some selected solute using different mechanisms. Okay, that means uh, differentially permeable membrane means it allows only certain substances to pass through it. It may be the solvent or solute. It will allow both the solvent as well as solute, but uh, in a restricted manner. Okay, in a different mechanisms. Okay. All biological membrane, that is the plasma membrane, tonoplast. Okay, that is membrane covering, okay, tonoplast, that is the membrane that is surrounding the vacuole and the membrane covering of a cell organelles. All these are differentially permeable membranes. Okay, they allow solvent and at the same time, they allow some solutes to pass through it, which are selectively which are selectively, selectively, selectively only they allow certain uh, molecules to pass through it. Okay. Okay, that is uh, about the four different types of membranes depending upon their permeability. Okay, and next coming to the facilitated diffusion. Anybody is having any doubt related to this diffusion and uh, types of membranes? Yes, sir. And coming to the facilitated diffusion. Rate of diffusion depends on the size of substances. The smaller substances diffuse faster. Diffusion of substance also depends upon its solubility in lipids. Lipid soluble substance diffuse faster. The substances that have a hydrophobic moiety find it difficult to pass through membrane. The movement of such molecules are okay, facilitate for which proteins provide site at which such, such molecule cross membrane. This is called as a facilitated diffusion. Okay, the molecules which are having hydrophobic nature, they find it difficult to pass through the membrane. Okay, such molecules need to be facilitated and uh, okay, and uh, they are uh, transported uh, with the help of protein molecules. That's why it is called as a facilitated diffusion because in facilitated diffusion, the concentration gradient must be present because as it is taking place along the concentration gradient, we are calling it as facilitated diffusion. The special protein that help in the movement of substance across the membranes do not require expenditure of ATP energy. Facilitated diffusion is sensitive to which reacts with the protein side chains.
facilitated diffusion cannot cause net transport of molecules from low to high concentration this would require input of energy so facilitated diffusion never a transport molecules against the concentration it will transport along the concentration gradient only why because if any molecule need to be transported again is the concentration that is from low concentration to high concentration they have to spend energy and next transport reach okay transport rate reaches a maximum when all of the protein transporters are being used that means uh, the saturation point is reached and next when you observe the facilitated diffusion is very specific it allows cell to get the substance for uptake that means uh, even though it is taking place along the concentration but uh, the transport of molecules occurs in a selective manner only certain substances are only transported by facilitated diffusion okay as already we said some protein channels are present and the membrane are always open others can be controlled that means the opening of these channels can be controlled whenever they are required they are opened whenever they are not required they are closed but uh, some protein channels are always open okay these protein channels we call it as porins the porins are the proteins that form huge pores in the outer membranes of the plastids mitochondria and some bacteria okay that is how the transport of molecules occur with the protein molecules means okay the extra cellular molecule bound to the transport protein the transport protein then rotates and release the molecule inside the cell okay that means the molecule will not move by itself through the channels okay first the protein carrier molecule binds to the molecule which need to be transported and the protein molecule rotates within the membrane as a result the molecule will be released towards the inner side from outer side to the inner side or from okay that is a need to be transported from outside to inside when it needs to be water channels are made up of eight different types of aquaporins that means the transport of water will occur through eight different types of pores that are present present associated with the protein carrier molecules these are called aquaporins okay which are a membrane protein for passive transport of water soluble substances okay they are involved in the transport okay of water not only water but also they are also helpful in the transportation of water soluble substances okay depending upon how the molecules are getting transported okay few transport proteins or carrier proteins permit diffusion only if two types of molecules move together that is in symport both molecules cross the membrane in the same direction in antiport both the molecule cross the membrane in opposite directions in uniport molecule moves across a membrane independent of the other molecule so only one molecule get transported in uniport it does not require the support of the other molecule whether it is moving okay whether moving inside or outside but some molecules need the association with the other molecules that means two molecules move depending upon how these two molecules are moving if they are moving in the same direction we are calling it as symport if they are moving in opposite direction we are calling it as antiport if only one molecule is independently moving without uh, the association with other molecule we are calling it as a uniport okay and next uh, active transport already we discussed about this active 
active transport uses energy to pump molecules against a concentration gradient okay if you want to transport the molecules against the concentration gradient we have to use energy so active transport is carried out by membrane bound proteins that means okay it is also facilitated by the proteins only hence different proteins in the membrane play a major role in both active as well as passive transport so we will find different types of proteins for passive transport and active transport cells undergoing active transport bear abundant mitochondria to provide atp needed to power active transport pumps are protein which are trans okay, which can transport the substances so that means uh, okay generally where this uh, active transport is taking place in those cells we will find more mitochondria to facilitate uh, the production of facilitate uh, okay atp because the active transport occurs with the help of atp and next active transport shows uphill transport because in this case movement can occur from lower to higher concentration in active transport as the movement of molecules is taking place from lower to higher concentration we are calling it as uphill transport okay these carrier proteins are specific like enzymes or substance to be carried across the membrane how the enzymes are specific for every substrate in the same manner okay the the membrane proteins are membrane proteins which are involved in carrying the molecules they are also specific okay for active transport and passive transport okay in okay this also the inhibitors can inhibit the process reacting with the protein side chain that means uh, this can be affected the transport of molecules can be affected by the inhibitors which can bind with the side chain of the protein carrier molecules okay it also reaches to a saturation point when all the protein carrier molecules are saturated with the molecules need to be transported the transportation reaches to a saturation point or maximum rate okay that is okay these are the some of the comparisons between the three different types of basic transport mechanisms